own province of Qatar's economic tourist is wished to be banned. The Palestinian militant group Hamas has announced that several of its senior fighters were killed in an Israeli attack on Al Shanti refugee camp west of Gaza City on Monday. Hamas described them as associates of its political leader Ismail Amir, who was assassinated in the Ukrainian capital a few weeks ago. The investigation is revealed that the in-laws for injured Muslim minority is once again facing violence after a deadly attack killed dozens of them in Mont d'Or earlier this month. Witnesses who fled to Bangladesh blamed the presence of the Arakan army who have been fighting the Arakan's military government. One man whose who state's motto was killed in the morning and the Indians were being attacked by both sides in the Arakan's targeted by the Arakan army and the Myanmar military. They are living almost every day. They are healthy. The Arakan army has denied any involvement. Many refugees fled Myanmar after the country's military killed thousands of them in February 70. A former U.S. Republican Congressman George Sanders has pleaded guilty to identity theft and wire fraud. Leading with federal prosecutors. Santos, who was expelled from the House of Representatives last December, was involved in 23 corruption charges. Another congressman has spent money on Botox treatments, look good, and for Arbitrary. ABC News. Thank you for that news. Hello and welcome to News Day on the BBC News. Victoria Orlinda and James Cobb. In the program today, we're going to focus on the start of the Democratic National Convention, in which the party will formally nominate Kamala Harris as its candidate in the November of the U.S. presidential election. Starter, election today, and then she replaced President Joe Biden. Can you tell us your thoughts on the race for the White House on an usual number? We must call 477 Also find out by the authorities in Nicaragua will shut down 1,500 non-governmental organizations so we are starting no other place other than Chicago in the United States, where in the past half hour, a tearful Joe Biden has taken to the stage of the Democratic National Convention. And as a part to thank you, Joe, we love you, Joe, amid cheers and righteous applause. The president is still speaking, so let's just dip in to hear what he's saying. I love the job. But I love my country more. I love my country more. You all this talk about how I named your old people and said I should step down. It's not true. just for seniors, but for everyone. It's Kathy Prescription Drug. Speaking live there at the Democratic National Convention there. Our correspondent is there. Quite a lot of emotion, quite a lot of positive feelings for Joe Biden throughout the last couple of hours. 
you're right. He got a, a long, long standing ovation, chance of, uh, we love you, Joe. There's huge warmth for him and appreciation for him, for his achievements and his legacy in the room tonight. You know, what this has done is provide a platform for him to gracefully hand over the torch to, to Kamala Harris. But don't forget, just a few weeks ago, you know, Democrats were in despair about Joe Biden's failings, um, incredibly worried about the complaints based on tonight. That seemingly is all forgotten, all forgiven. It's now about thanking him uh, for what he's done for the party, what he's done for America. Um, and listening to him now play the transition role for Kamala Harris. I mean, that is the aim of this convention. Why not more support for Kamala Harris to keep the momentum going for her? Um, and he really has played that role tonight, but this is so emotional because it is effectively uh, a farewell speech for him too. And you, you can hear that he's going through his list of achievements, uh, talking about things that, that he has done with his presidency and setting out what Kamala Harris would do in the future and drawing that distinction between her and between Donald Trump and why he believes voters must uh, vote her in to save democracy in America, as he's put it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it is emotional for people who want to, for Democratic supporters who want to say thank you for everything he's done. It's quite a contrast to how they felt about a month ago. Yeah, absolutely. So by his tears and his speech as well. So if then is this a big chance to make the case, hey, I'm a great president, I'm a great president, what's the basis of the argument? What are the lines of the speech? Well, part of it needs to have been politics. Part of it needs to have been policies, uh, because, you know, Kamala Harris is the president of the institution, she hasn't had time yet to really lay out her agenda. We're going to hear more from her later in the week. It's been about those kind of headlines feelings of optimism, of hope for the future. The fact that Kamala Harris supports a woman's right to choose on abortion, that she supports LGBT rights, things like that, about the fact that she stands for hope and optimism uh, as Democrats see it for the future in comparison to what they see as Donald Trump's sort of negative, uh, fearful re rhetoric that he puts out. That's where the dividing lines are being drawn in tonight. Later on in the week, of course, there's going to come a moment where Kamala Harris can't just rely on good vibes alone. She's going to have to put some more flesh on the bones of her policy. But this has been quite a scramble behind the scenes, not only to get this uh, show ready for this evening, and it was a big arena spectacular show, that's how politics is, is done at party conventions in America, uh, but to get some more detail for her so she can spell out for people what a Kamala Harris presidency would look like. We heard under your voice there some bits of audio, of course, it says like you're talking, the occasional clue too, and that's been a feature too. Every time Donald Trump or uh, other Republicans are mentioned, we hear clues from the crowd. How much then is Donald Trump a presence here at the convention group, obviously not a part? Well, there are 